I've always had one big dream and one goal in mind. My dream was to always go to college. As you can imagine, growing up in Southeast DC, there was a high crime rate. Um, so there's a lot of drugs, there's a lot of dealing going around, there's a lot of killing going around. Personally, it's, it's, a, it's a scary thing. I mean, um, anytime you hear a footstep, you know, look behind you, look to the side of you, you're always alert. I was actually robbed uh, twice going to Winston. But then, uh, once it starts to happen again, and it actually starts to become a norm. It actually starts to become like, man, this is what I have to become. This is what I have to get used to. This is what life is. It just wasn't what I think that a child should see at a young age. Gun violence, people getting shot, people on drugs. They are, have the access to get these drugs. They have the access to get guns or have access to be in a gang. And it just, it's just easy to be influenced in that situation. I wasn't affected by it, but my mom was on drugs for a while. It kind of took a toll on us because we would have to do things for ourselves. As a kid, I kind of felt that I'm being a mother at an early age and I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't put here to do this, but I didn't want to see us struggle, so I made sure that we had everything we needed. I'm not sad about it, I'm not upset about it. I still love my mom and I just know that she she couldn't do what she didn't know. So if she was never given the role or she wasn't she wasn't taught the way to be a mom, she she just did what she did. She did what she knew. I, I was just in a point where I just didn't want to go to school. I would like I would say I'm going to school but I never go. If I did go to school I would I would like leave out the back door. Um, and I was outside at the age of 13 to 2, 3 in the morning, hanging out with the older guys, you know, uh, just, just kind of seeing what they do outside, just kind of hanging out with them, going to other neighborhoods, you know, kind of kind of looking for people to start fights with, uh, you know, just kind of like just walking the streets, just looking for something bad to do. That was our entertainment. And, and personally, you know, I didn't have anyone that, could, that told me, hey, you need to be in the house. I just lost my grandfather two months before the school year ended. And um, I remember getting a, receiving a letter from Hein uh, telling me that I got expelled from junior high school. And for me, it, it really hurt. And uh, I remember that year, I said that I was gonna make a change. So my junior year of high school, I came into my own. Uh, I figured out how to study. I figured out how to, how to pass classes. Uh, I figured out, you know, hey, you know, this is this is this is how you you can become a successful high school student. From an early age, I already knew that I would have to be the person that gets out of this home to make it for my family. The only way for me to get my mom off of drugs and my brother to graduate from high school and to make it in life, I'm going to get good grades and I'm going to go to college. That will be the only way. How can I go to college when my parents? are struggling to make ends meet. How can I go to college when, you know, everyone around me, they have to rob people just to have money in their pocket? So when I got to the 10th grade, um, I heard about this program. They had an office inside of the school, H.D. Whitson, and I would go in there every day just to ask simple questions like, what does it take to go to college? What do I need to do? And me just going in and asking simple questions about college was the start of it all. I remember writing those essays and going through the interview process, and I was just like, man, I'm not going to get this. You know, this, you know this, this kind of stuff isn't meant for me. But once I got into College Success Foundation, um, it truly changed my life. That's when my vision became clear, and that's when, for me, uh, you know, I said to myself, man, this is my way out. And then, uh, then I had a slip up. Uh, senior year of high school, I remember one of, one of my buddies came to me one day. He was like, man, you know, I got the guidance counselor's passcode. You know, you can change, change your grades. I got rejected from my first school. And um, I remember saying to myself, like, man, there's no way I'm going to get accepted 
with my GPA being to where it is. I got expelled, of course. I remember going back to the College Success Foundation. I, I just kind of figured, kind of asked myself, like, man, how do I explain this to them? Uh, you know, how do I get past this? And they made me come into the office every day instead of staying home, doing nothing, and being on the streets. Um, they helped me get back into school. They just gave me something to believe in. It gave me a second chance in life. And, and to me, I wanted to prove them that they were right for giving me this opportunity. I mean, it was just, it was just an unbelievable feeling. They want, they want everyone to be successful. And man, I was just very lucky to have them, to have them by my side. <laughs> Kia was my mentor. She was helpful in my entire journey. She's really like a mother figure. In the time that I've been in the foundation, it has changed my life tremendously. The foundation is not just a scholarship. The foundation is a family. The foundation is everything you need it to be all in one. It's just one place where you can go and they love on us and they nurture us and they teach us the way to be. And even though we don't have it at home, we always will have that in our minds, like they're always with us. It was the best day of my life when I graduated. I felt so accomplished, like all of this heavy thing on my shoulder is finally off. I've done something that I wanted to do for my entire life. So my mom has MS, uh, multiple sclerosis, and she has been sick for maybe four or five years now. So I decided to come back to Ward 7 to make sure she's okay and that she's taking her medicine or she's eating or that the bills are being paid. And I thought it was a good idea to come back home and be able to help her do those things because I want to build a relationship with my mom. It might have been the best in the past, but I can make it better now. So I was very excited to graduate from Penn State. Um, I remember when I walked across the stairs and I remember when I saw Ms. B, I was just, I was just very happy because she believed in me. And I, that was my goal. They gave me that second opportunity and, my, and, and I wanted to take that opportunity and run with it. And I felt like when I walked across the stage and got that degree, uh, the world was lifted. And I just honestly felt very happy and successful to be where I was at. Uh, I graduated with a corporate communication degree. Um, also I also have a couple certificates. I have a, a history certificate and also a business certificate. The company I work for is, that, is, is called New Day USA. We give back mortgage loans to, to veterans. But now I'm coming back and actually helping students and working as a young adult. I am proof that students from Ward 7 they are doing things. They are giving back to their community. They are trying to make things better. I think the College Success Foundation does an amazing job of pulling in kids from Ward 7 and 8 and mentoring them, treating them like they're their own. They do so much for us that I can't even imagine what it would be like if we didn't have this program. The College Success Foundation will always be a part of me. They gave me a sense of love. They gave me a sense of care. Whenever I needed a mentor, I needed someone to talk to. Um, whenever I needed financial help, uh, they, they, they gave me something to believe in. Thank you.